If you're about to buy your first handgun, this video is especially for you. Now, I watched a YouTube video last night, and the guy said a lot of gun shops push snub nose revolvers to new shooters, and they don't understand why they do it. They said that they think the reason they're actually doing it is because some revolvers come in flashy colors, which is attractive to girls, and that's why they push it to them. Especially tactical training courses really hit gun shops hard saying that, you know, a revolver is not ideal for a first gun for a new shooter. Now, there is logic behind it, and there is a difference. The people that tactical training courses are running into are green shooters. The people that are coming into gun shops are new shooters. There is a difference. There's not much of a difference, but there's a very important difference. See, when they get to their tactical training course, now this is the rule, of course, there's always exceptions. When they get to their tactical training course, they've already purchased a handgun, they've shot for probably a year, put a couple hundred rounds through it, they still don't feel comfortable with it, they call themselves a new shooter, but what they're classified as now is a green shooter. They've already popped their cherry, they got some rounds under their belt, they feel a little bit more comfortable with a firearm, they understand the mechanics a little bit more, that would be a green shooter. A new shooter comes into the store, they have zero firearm experience. They may never have even shot anything propelled by gunpowder. Or they might even be in the boat where they've shot a rifle or a shotgun before once or twice, but now they want to get a handgun. They've never touched one before. So, what would be the logic behind giving someone a snub nose revolver for their very first handgun on a very brand new shooter? Now, a lot of the tactical training courses will say because the gun shop guy says that it's easier to use. And there is some truth behind that. So, if I want to reload of a revolver, I got one button, I push it, the cylinder comes open, I hit this little rod right here, it's called an ejector, it pushes out the empty casings, I flip it back over, I put in my new casings, or cartridges, close it, and I'm ready to go. It's already charged. It is ready to shoot. And you can just pull the trigger. Now do the same thing. Obviously this is a more complicated firearm, but we'll go to just a straight up striker fire. So if I want to reload this, I'm going to eject my magazine. I'm going to put cartridges in the magazine. I'm going to reinsert the magazine. Rack the slide back. And then it's ready to go. This particular one has a safety, so you gotta remember the safety needs to be off when it's time to fire. This is a problem for a lot of people. There's a lot of people on semi-automatic pistols that just do not feel comfortable having a round in the chamber. They'll have the mag full, but they won't have one in the chamber. So if they want to shoot, they need to remove the safety if it's got one, bring the slide to the rear, let the slide go, and then they're able to fire. For whatever reason, I don't quite understand the psychology behind it. People that aren't comfortable having one chambered in a semi-auto are comfortable having one in, chambered in a revolver. So if they want the fire, all they have to do is pull the trigger. Now I recommend specifically a double single. So you can either pull the trigger or you can cock the hammer back and shoot it. And I'll get into more of that why a little bit later, but let me continue to go over this. So, now if I want to clean this pistol, I need to eject the magazine, lock the slide to the rear, and remember this is the more easier examples of pistols. They get much more complicated past this point. Flip this lever down, bring the slide forward, pull the slide back a little bit, dry fire it, take it apart, Remove my spring, remove my barrel, clean, reverse process. And that's how you would field strip and clean your average semi-auto. Like I said, they get much more complicated past this point. Now, if I want to clean the revolver, I'm going to push this little button right here. Pop my cylinder open, run my brush to the cylinder, 
run my brush to the barrel, wipe it all down. There's no parts floating around. There's nothing to remember how to put back together. Close my cylinder and I'm done. What do we got for controls? Again, remember, this is the simpler side of things. They get more complicated past this point. Well, we got our takedown lever. We got our slide stop slash slide release. We got our magazine ejection, trigger, and on this particular one, a safety. Well, and a laser, but we're not gonna count that. What about on a revolver? We got our cylinder opener, our rod, and our hammer. So they're pretty similar on controls, but the only ones that really matter is one, two, three. We got one, two, three, four. So you get one less control. That's pretty cool, but still, it's not really winning the case, is it? Because you get much more capacity with a semi-auto, in most cases. This is the extended magazine, so it's got eight plus one. Your normal magazine is seven plus one. So you got two extra shots over, actually this one's a five shot, isn't it? Three extra shots over a revolver. What's your statistical average that will take care of most situations you run into? Because you want to practice for the rule, not the exception. That would be three shots. So this gives you two extra shots to get the job done beyond what's normally expelled. Because if you went for the exception and not the rule, well, then you'd be wearing level four body armor all the time, have an AR slung with at least two or 300 rounds on you. It's just not practical. So that's why we go for the rule, not the exception. Now where the real big difference comes between green and brand new is learning how to shoot in the first place. For example, and now I'm not talking down on a tactical training course. What they do is very important. They comb the gun shooting sport. They pull out what they feel is important nuggets of information, and then they teach it in a class, giving you the tools to train yourself to a higher level. They do this professionally. They are professionals. They are good at what they do. By no means underestimate the ability and the skills that you will learn by going to a tactical training class. But if that's all you did, that's all you had for experience was a single class, that's practically not safe. Yes, they will get you to proficiency, but you need to keep shooting way past that. What you're trying to gain from that class is tools so you can practice on your own, which is great for a green shooter, but we're talking about a new shooter. What I'm going to give you is the ability to train yourself. With a revolver, it's easy because, all right, so I got five cylinders right here. I put a cartridge in, I spin it so I don't know where it is, and I close it. Because the hardest part of learning a pistol is getting past the flinch. They usually say it's between two and 500 rounds before you get past this. With doing that, you will do it much quicker, much more cheaper, it's more effective. Recently, what, was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday. Customer had come in, zero handgun experience. So what I did, Remember, it normally takes people two to three, two to five hundred rounds to do this. I did it in one single round. I got him to break his flinch. So this is your normal size silhouette target. This is what we were shooting at. It's one third the size if you're going the width, and it's one quarter the size if you're going height. I do that to simulate a long range shot. We went seven to ten yards roughly. I just paced it out real quick. Probably somewhere in between seven to ten yards. So three times farther, that would be like 30 yard shots. It's not a perfect simulation, but it helps you. What are the words I'm looking for? It helps you shoot long range without adding the risk. See, when I shorten it up to 10 yards and I just use a third size target, if things go sideways, his round is still going in the berm. If I back him out to 30 yards and give him an actual silhouette target, if things go sideways, he might shoot a plane out of the sky or something like that. So yes, you still need to shoot at 30 yards to confirm your results at 10 yards. But anyway, so what I did is I gave him actually this particular revolver right here. I pretended to load it. 
I told them the basics, you know, finger off the trigger, blah, 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 blah. Here's your basic safety tips. So this is what you're going to do. Because we started in single action first, you're going to cock the hammer back. You're going to aim at the target. What you want to do is pull the trigger, and your sight should still be where you are aiming after you're done pulling the trigger. Because if you can't keep the sights on the target while you're dry practice, you don't have a chance in hell at missing, or you have a chance at hell at hitting when you have a cartridge in there. So I did a couple of dry. And then I told him I loaded it. He closed the cylinder. He cocks it back just like we were doing before. Except this time he was like... It would have totally been in the dirt. Complete miss. But because he's seen that without the explosion of the cartridge going off camouflaging it. He was like, holy crap. Man, I really flinched on that. I was like, well here, this time we're going to load it for real. So I pretended to drop another shell in there. Cocked it back. About half as much. He would have been on the paper... But he still would have been low. We did this four or five times. I got him to the point to where he was convinced I'm just not going to load it. And he's going to be doing this all day long. And then I actually put a cartridge in there. This was his first shot at 10 yards. 10, 10. Four of them away from like the dead center. Not too bad. So then after he shot that one shot. Went back to dry practice. Well, I didn't tell him we were going to dry practice. I'm... Let him think that we were just loading it up again. Pretending to put a cartridge in. Went like that, and he flinched again. So we did that a few more times. I eventually got him to think that it was just never going to be loaded. And then I put in a cartridge. Second shot. Almost dead center. Now we wind up doing a double action trigger pulls too. This way he could get a feel for the whole thing. But anyway, the same thing with double action. And then what I ultimately winded up doing is I'd have him go through all five to practice the reload. So I put one in there. Randomly. He didn't know when it was going to happen, but I was trying to get him to count his shots. Because with a pistol, it don't really matter if you're even slightly convinced you're low on ammo. Just change your magazine. Not a big deal. With a revolver, you got to count your shots. Because if you're down to four... You need to start looking for a place to take cover or something because you only have one left and you're going to have to reload. But anyway, I'd have him go through the whole five and I'd just have a random shot in there. So he'd go through and he was hitting almost every single time. Then he'd hit five, do his reload, put it in there, and you're good to go. And see, what I'm giving you is the tools to learn on your own after you're out of my care, watchful eye, whatever you want to call it. And with a semi-automatic, you just can't do that because you know that it's loaded. Even after I got him so he's shooting perfectly on the revolver, then I grabbed a semi-auto. That particular one was a Ruger and it had a magazine disconnect, so it couldn't do any practice because you were not able to pull the trigger without a magazine in there. Loaded it up, put it in there, made sure he knew that there was for sure one in the chamber. All of a sudden, boom, dirt, dirt, dirt. I think he got two out of six shots on the paper. And remember, the most important rule is not the handgun you bring, but you bring the handgun you can actually hit with. If you can't hit with a semi-auto, it doesn't matter if you got a 30-shot mag in there, you're still not hitting. A miss is a miss, a hit is a hit. So then after that, we went through different drills. I had him go through double action pulls really quickly. And another good reason why I like double action single actions is because when you're holstering it you can put your finger on the trigger or the hammer and prevent the trigger from accidentally being pulled and shooting yourself you can't do that with striker fires and that's what we're doing we're giving you the tools to be able to train yourself after that point so now we got you a firearm you're able to because you can just load it by yourself drop one in there <laughs> you're a goof drop one in there spin it so you're not looking then close the cylinder and you'll get, because you'll think that there's a shot going to happen, but then you can see your flinch, you can keep working on it, and with something like a 38 or a 357, you can put in really light target loads. And then when you actually like carry it on you, you can put in some sort of defensive load, because at that point, the recoil don't matter. If your adrenaline's actually going like you're defending your life, you're probably not even going to notice that the firearm shot. You're just going to do what you want until eventually you're like, click, click, click. And a snub nose revolver is just small enough to carry. I mean, this is getting pretty excessive. Here it is compared to a semi-auto. So 
So this is an excellent firearm to learn on, and you can still carry it. That's why most gun shops push snub nose revolvers for a person's very first gun. Not when they're green, but for their very first gun. And I'll admit, I did wind up buying a Glock for my very first pistol, but I learned on a revolver. The only reason I bought a Glock is because there was no really competitive options out there. I mean, yeah, I could have went to a 9mm, but when they told me about a 9mm, I was like, isn't 9mm, isn't that some sort of metric measurement? I mean, what do you think, I'm some sort of communist? And then I was like, well, if I swallow this 9mm, I could totally shit it out and not even get any sort of discomfort. I probably wouldn't even know I did. And if I have to put two in someone's ass, I at least want them to be slightly discomfortable for it. So I wanted a 45. So those real expensive 1911s, a Mark 23, I think, was available, and a Glock 21. So that's why I went with a Glock. And I guess that's a lie, too, because I didn't actually buy it. The girl I was with at that time bought it for me. But yeah, eventually, yeah, I'd go with a semi-auto. But for your very, very, very first gun, I recommend getting a revolver until you've uh, achieved the shooting fundamentals to be good. Then at that point, you'll understand the mechanics, you'll understand what's going on, and then you can go to a semi-auto. I'm still a double single fan, so if possible, go with the DASA, but there's nothing wrong with a striker fire. Once you're green and you're no longer a beginner shooter, a new shooter. But anyway, that's my opinions and my thoughts on the whole matter. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon. I also got affiliate links in the description down below. Even if you don't buy what the link is for, just going on there and doing your Amazon shopping you were going to do anyway, I get a little kickback for it because you went there off of my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.